Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trek on Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Hello, Aaron. How are you today? I'm doing great. Gina, how are you doing today? Very well. Um, we are going to kick off your week, kind of, if, if you count Tuesday as the kickoff of your week, um, with an <laughs> old fashioned throwback to like a kind of a Trek at two kind of style story. We are focusing on a Trek from the pages of Scout Life today. I do believe that this is in the April issue. Yes, at Scout Life, we can see into the future and we are reading the mm -hmm. April issue of Scout Life today. You can check out this story not only in print, if you are subscribed to Scout Life, but you can also check it out for free in the app, Scout Life app. And we'll do you one better. Behind the scenes, Brian puts these stories on scoutlife.org, so you can check out the feature there as well. That's where I'm going to read it, Aaron. Where, where are you going to read it? I think I'm going to read it on scoutlife.org as well. Um, I do like the fact that it's available in multiple formats through multiple platforms, however you like to do it. If you like to do it old school with the print magazine, perfect. You can do that. If you'd like to go uh, kind of medium old school, maybe with the website and the new school with the app, we've got you covered no matter what, basically. Yeah, we would love to know your feedback. What, um, where on the spectrum do those fall? What is old school and what is the newest school? Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. say print site app? If you say print app site i think i'd say print app site but I, I don't know gotta give a quick shout out to one of our loyal viewers from the beginning hello xavier from pack 817 we're glad you've tuned in today um aaron today's story is actually not written by you today's story is not written by me at all but it is the kind of story that i would like to write it's a it's about um a, a scouts bsa troop that has kind of traditions and I always kind of like to hear about uh, Scouts BSA troops who have a tradition, maybe uh, every summer they do a certain high adventure type activity or something like that. Because yep. I think that really, we're going to get into that a little bit, I think, uh, in the article about how that kind of builds um, camaraderie in the troop. It, you know, it kind of sets a standard, right, where you know every year you're going to shoot for this particular outing. You might have to fundraise for it. You may have to train physically for it to be ready for it. Uh, it's a great way to kind of set expectations like, hey, this is just what we're going to do. And we kind of expect everybody to, to do their best, right? Absolutely. Um, Rob says he likes to read the magazine, but his son hasn't given it up yet. So it should be any day now. That's Wrong with that. April. Maybe you'll get it the day before April. Well, we don't mm -hmm. know, but keep us posted, Rob. Yeah, agreed. Um, this story definitely involves a little bit of preparation on the physical fitness side. Um, they're not going to totally spoil it. I will say it takes place in a little area called the Adirondacks, which I think keep coming up more and more. It seems like it's a buzzy spot to visit. My parents mm -hmm. are from around there. So I heard that kind of, you know, I heard about them growing up, but mm -hmm. now I feel like I have a lot of friends who like to visit the area. So um, I'm glad that we had a Scout Life story that took place here. Yeah, absolutely. I think what we've done over the years, uh, a handful of stories uh, in Scout Life about troops going there. I, I think that it is definitely a hot spot for uh, units in that area, right? It's, it's a cool place to visit. So uh, definitely worthy of coverage. Okay. The story is about canoeing. And the title that is on scoutlife.org is Scouts Keep Tradition of Canoe Adventures in the Adirondacks. Yeah. There's a backstory here. It's a bit of a tradition for this troop, but there's going to be some twists and turns that happen. And of course, you're going to hear about their challenges and opportunities as they tackle this good old fashioned trek. The story is by our good buddy, Michael Freeman, and the pictures are by our other good buddy, Michael Roytek. We know these guys. We feel mm -hmm. honored to know them. We, we know both we Michaels. Put this story together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we do. Um, these pictures are awesome. Behind the scenes, Brian has pulled them. So we will take a look at the same pictures that you could see in the story as we go. Aaron, should I, should I begin? Let's get started, Gina. You go first. Okay. Everyone tends to make new friends at summer camp, but they don't usually have feathers. A group of ducks visited Girls Troop, Girls Troop 284's campsite as the scouts worked on the American Heritage Merit Badge together, and Fiona Levick loved it. I said hi to them, the 12-year-old tenderfoot scout says. I was so happy because there were so many of them. However, the waterfowl soon wore out their welcome for the rest of the troop. 
The ducks refused to waddle off and the girl's imaginations ran wild. We slept in the lean-to that night and everyone was terrified that the ducks would come and attack us because Fiona had summoned them to our campsite to eat all our food, says Tenderfoot Scout Grace O'Donovan, 12. Of course, that didn't happen, but the entertaining evening added some humor to an exhausting, rain-drenched canoe trek across the lakes nestled among New York's Adirondack Mountains. I want to just say, before we keep going, I love this story. Right off the bat, we feature some young scouts, and you get that feeling of, like, the kind of zany young scout environment that uh, these girls are camping in. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And for young scouts, this is a pretty epic trip, as well as we're about to find out here. Um, this next section is called Continuing the Tradition. For more than 50 years, Boys Troop 284 out of Radnor, Pennsylvania, has canoed in northeastern New York. The trek typically totals 100 miles over two weeks and serves as the troop's summer camp as adult leaders lead merit badge classes in canoeing, life-saving, fishing, and nature, among others. We've been going for as long as a lot of our adults can remember, says Life Scout Parker Brooms, who's 16 years old. In the 1960s, this is Parker, who's 16 years old, commenting, in the 1960s, that's before I was born, Gina, we were not a very adventurous troop. I love how he uses we, even though this is literally 40 years before he was born. In the 1960s, we were not a very adventurous troop. Our scoutmaster <laughs> then wanted to transform that. He knows his history. I like it, that's cool. He knows the history of his troop. Uh, the first trek launched in 1970, and every few years, the scouts canoe through the Adirondacks. During other years, they go to council camps and high adventure bases like Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico. But the canoe trek remains a favorite, not only for its tradition, but also for the adventure. Last July, the girls' troop planned its own week-long 50-mile version. The girls decided we could do it, so we gave it a shot, says second-class scout Anna Latchford, who's 12. I think half of us didn't know how to canoe, so I think it was pretty helpful to get used to the strokes and being in a canoe. To prepare for the journey, the scouts practiced canoe strokes by using brooms at troop meetings. That's fun. They also went on an overnight practice trip down the Delaware River. To ensure their gear stayed dry, some scouts brought, bought quality rain jackets and waterproof compression bags, while others opted for cheap ponchos and trash bags. Whichever waterproof gear the scouts chose to bring, they would need it, Gina, starting right on day one. It's always a good sign when day one you get hit with the rain. Yeah, I don't think we've ever really read about a trek where everything went exactly as planned and there was nothing <laughs> at all unexpected. Nope. Mm -hmm. It rained on this trek. Rain, rain, go away. With rented Kevlar canoes, the troops met in Old Forge, New York to launch their separate treks. The second we show up, it starts raining, says Life Scout Kyle Johnson, who's 14. On pretty much every summer camp, no matter where we go, it tends to rain every day, but we're always prepared. That's a Troop 284 thing, says Sam Murphy, a 15-year-old Star Scout. The boys took off, logging nearly seven miles on the opening day. Meanwhile, the girls needed some time to get on the water, which had turned choppy as the weather worsened. It had taken a long time for us to get going, says Star Scout Sophie Tachna, 14. It was pouring rain and everybody was tired by the end of it when we made it to the island. People were yelling and screaming. Yeah, we made it to our first destination. A tough first day can be demoralizing. And when you don't know whether the rest of the trip will bring more of the same, you might not want to continue. But a scout is cheerful and will find a way to stay positive. We sang a lot of songs, says Tenderfoot Scout Quinn O'Donovan, 14. Good job to these girls for keeping their spirits high. Um, I like the, po the point of the story where Michael Freeman points out it can be demoralizing that first day if things don't go as planned and it's extremely tiring. So I like the um, young energy of this troop for sure. Quick shout out to Troop 7321. Rob says he knows those guys. I assume he's talking about Michael Freeman and Michael Roy Tech. Um, hello from West Virginia, from Bobby. Hello from Fremont, Fremont California. That's Mark. And... Mark points out that there is a drought in California, so there are fewer rivers to canoe on. Maybe get out to the Adirondacks and um, make a trek of it. Absolutely. Um, the next section of the story, Gina, have some fun, it's called. While you're paddling for hours, you have to take time to take in your surroundings. The boys spotted bald eagles flying overhead and a muskrat scurrying on the shore. 
while the girls noticed a loon diving in the lake. Long times on the water also mean you can talk with your friends and have a good time. Just being with everyone, it was a really fun experience, Sam says. You don't have your phones. Normally when I'd see kids hanging out, they're all on their phones. It's really nice to get away from technology and distractions like that for two weeks and just be with each other. Times on land, though, weren't always so much fun. The canoeing wasn't the hard part. It was the portages, says Noah Amjed, 12 years old, a second class scout. Portages are trails between lakes. You must carry your canoes and gear from one lake to the next. That's why it's important to pack light. Some of the boys' backpacks weighed only 10 pounds since they packed just a few sets of clothes to last for the two-week trek. At some point, we could put up clotheslines if our clothes got dirty so we could wash them and use them again, says second-class scout Sharang Kandi, 12 years old. When it's been raining for days, your clothes can get dirty pretty fast, especially when you're playing games in camp. One of the boys' favorite was infiltration, where one team must sneak to the other team's base without getting caught. We've heard that about portaging a few times now. Um, I think we talked to some youth who had done a trek at Northern Tier, and they talked mm -hmm. about how challenging portaging can be. But boy, but yeah. that gives you a great workout. Totally, totally, yes. Definitely got to be prepared. And look at the mud. That, that That's tricky. <laughs> I know. Uh, these girls who had not done this before, had not been part of this more than 50-year tradition, probably came out of it, like they probably went in feeling like total novices and came out feeling like, yeah, we know a thing or two about canoeing. That's yeah, my guess. Ab absolutely, yes. Okay, here is the stunning conclusion, Aaron. Making their <laughs> mark. At the end of each trek, the scouts had earned several merit badges and completed their intended journeys. The boys ended in Ceranic after 100 miles, the girls at Long Lake after 50. The scouts felt accomplished, but some could not wait to get home. When you're gone for a week or two, it feels nice returning to modern conveniences and comforts. However, it feels even nicer after spending time with your friends, mastering a new skill, and conquering a challenge. I had a lot of fun, says Judy Horn, 14, a scout, and that was only my second time camping. I mean, wow, imagine that being your second time camping. That's pretty intense. I'm also imagining these kids coming home and being so muddy and all their stuff being so muddy and then taking probably that first good shower when they get home and probably then sleeping for mm, 24 hours. Yes, 100%. That's really <laughs> impressive. Some of them uh, not only had not been canoeing, but didn't even have that much camping experience. So those two things combined, that's really impressive. And they were young. They were I know we've said that a few times. Yeah, yeah. exactly. This, these are relatively speaking young scouts. Um, there's a little extra sidebar to the story that I would love to discuss, Jeannie, with you real quick, that I think is really interesting. Um, something that we talk about every once in a while in scouting, and that is homesickness, especially for young kids, right, who aren't, you know, frankly, used to being, you know, they've, they've done Cub Scout events most likely with their whole family. And so, you know, your first, second camp out outings, you know, your chances are your mom and dad might not be there. Homesickness, very common, nothing to be ashamed of, as, as Michael writes in the story. Uh, during these treks, some scouts wanted to go home. It's a natural feeling that you might have during an outing. There's no shame in feeling that way. I 100% agree. Um, on my first trip, to summer camp with some scouts, my son, Gina, and among some other scouts, um, there were some homesickness, not gonna name any names, but there were some boys, it was their first time you know, away from home, and they were like, you know, after that first night, we wanna go home. I agree, no shame in feeling that way. Don't be embarrassed if you get homesick to talk to a friend or a scout leader. They want you to have a good time and can let you know what to expect for the rest of the trip, which can be comforting. If you need an additional outlet, Send a message back home or jot down your thoughts in a journal. Uh, if your friend is feeling homesick, encourage him or her. Ask if they want to talk about how they're feeling. Let them know there's a lot of fun to be had and then invite them to play a game or work on a project together. That's very well said, Gina. Nothing wrong with that feeling. We've all been there, right? Even as grown ups, sometimes we get homesick when we're away or something like that, someplace like that. You have some, some anxiety, some hesitation. Very well put. Nothing wrong with that. I think the main thing, best piece of advice is to tell somebody about it. Don't be embarrassed. Just be like, you know, man, I don't, I don't feel so good right now. And, and talk about it with a buddy, a friend, a trusted adult leader, whoever it might be. Yeah, definitely like the idea of talking about it because you might hear from somebody else like, I'm homesick too. Mm -hmm. And also, these might be the first times you're feeling these things. If you are a young scout who's out on a trek or a trip or what have you, 
But like Aaron said, we all feel them. We all feel them. Like even just the first couple of days of a vacation can feel like that. Sometimes you feel homesick. Absolutely. Yes. But if your experience is anything like mine and most people I know, you know, even going to college, it will pass. It will definitely pass. If you mm -hmm. just tell yourself, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little sad right now, but things are going to feel better. I, I know this will pass. You can remember Gina promised you that it will. You might get a twinge of it here and there, but my yeah. advice is just try to, Know it'll pass and distract yourself. Just get involved with something, and as soon as you know it, that'll be your new normal. You'll what then you experience, which is very weird. You get home, and you get like a little sick for the feeling of of being on a track. Mm -hmm. It's like that was your home suddenly. A hundred percent. Yes, you get home, and after spending a week with all your buddies, you're back home. Uh, maybe you have to go back to school, or you have household chores to do, or whatever things like that. And you're like, ah, oh, wish I was back at the Adirondacks, you know. Your truck sick is behind. behind yeah, that's perfect. Set. I never heard that Trek before, sick. but that's a pretty good, pretty good description of it. Yes, thank you, Brian. I like the coining mm -hmm. that. I'm just imagining getting home though and being like, "Boy, I wish I could portage right now." <laughs> Maybe the portaging specifically isn't what you miss, but you do miss <laughs> your friends because it's very, you know, a bonding experience, right? To be out there with your friends for a week or so in the wilderness, you do you can become very close to your buddies, and you miss things like this right here, playing chess with your friends, you know. Absolutely. These pictures are, are really stellar. One more shout out to Michael Roy Tech who took them. Hello to Troop 200 in the Northeast Georgia Council. Hello to Colorado. Uh, Rob also said something funny. Their troop tradition is that we have no traditions except to take a long trip over Thanksgiving break. Hey, that's okay. That's fine. It up. It yeah. doesn't have to be tra a traditional trip. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. Well, Aaron, this was very fun. And guys, we will be back Friday. Um, it will be a Cub Chat Live at 2 p.m. Central, our typical Cub Chat Live time. And Aaron will be on, and it is going to be a very hot topic of Cub Scout Crafts. Is that right? Yeah, we're going to talk about Cub Scout Crafts. We want you to bring your ideas. If you uh, any Cub Scout folks watching right now, tune in Friday, 2 p.m. Central. Tell us about Cub Scout Crafts that you have made, your favorite, the ones that worked out the best. Maybe there's some that didn't turn out so good. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Tell us about those, too. We'd like to hear about it. Yeah, let somebody, let a volunteer or parent and Cub Scouts know about Cub Chat Live so they tune in. I also jumped ahead of myself. Just want to remind you guys, we've got stories like today's truck and way more in the pages of Scout Life, both print and in the app. And sometimes on scoutlife.org, we, we do a little cross share of, of a story mm -hmm. there. But there's a picture of our cover for April. Check out this issue. You got you to gotta read. There's a, lot, there's a lot in it. More than just canoes packed with content if it's in a scout's life gina it's in scout life is what we say mm, okay very good <laughs> good job today aaron excellent gina, excellent job reading the story today we hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for tuning in hope to see you on friday cup chat live bye everybody <laughs>